The next thing I wanted to take a look at was how to use the quality metrics within the qualitivity application. So the quality metrics are driven by the details you put in the settings. So if you click on the application settings up here and then come down to the quality metrics node, when you click on that, I have five, but by default, you'll see that you have four quality metric groups that come pre-installed. You have the Taos Dynamic Quality Framework, and this is pretty complete. So we have all the different categories, the, def the severities, the default severities that we want to use, and the description. The default severities are a bit of a guess, really, um, as to what they're most likely to be. Um, if people have strong feelings about that one way or the other, perhaps we'll get some feedback um, over the time that the application is, is being used. And then we can make this more realistic to suit people's needs. The same with um, SAE J2450. So we're here, we're pretty complete as well. The MQM core, same thing. The Lisa QA metric is very incomplete. Um, no blame on Patrick, the developer here. This is all my fault. I added this uh, because it was part of the SDL TMS system. It's in the, in the help guide and we have some customers at SDL who still use this. So we thought it made sense to add it into here. So we've taken the categories and we've taken the severities, but we haven't applied a default because we had no guidance on that. And, and it's my fault. I didn't give any time to going through deciding what the default might be. So if anyone has any ideas on that, I'll be very grateful and we can um, top that off. And also with regards to a description, because I can't find a description for the old, now defunct, almost Lisa QA metric. So those are the four that come by default. I've then added an extra one in here, keep it simple one, which is um, just got three items in there, which I did just to show you how easy it was to be, uh, to be able to set them up. So the way it would work, say for example, you wanted to create your own and you wanted to base it around a lot of the, the information that's inside the Lisa QA metric, then rather than type it all out, you can clone it. So you click on there, and you say Lisa metric two, and then there's your starting point. And then you can remove any that you don't want. You can add new ones to it, to it, add your own severities, and you can add, chop, and, chop and change it as you see fit. So very straightforward, very simple to do. But I'm gonna close that because I don't need that. The other cool thing about this is it's possible to assign a default quality metric group to a customer. So if your customers are all using different quality models, you can put them into here. And then when you go into the clients modes here and look at the quality metrics, this will tell you what all the, def all the defaults are. So the HSE default is Taos DQF, Lousy Pay is SAE J2450, and Learn to Speak is Lisa QA metric. But you can change these to be whatever you fancy. So that's how you set it up. Or well, the only thing I didn't mention, perhaps, uh, if we come back to here, is that when you're doing this, one thing you also need to think about is the quality assessment settings. So this is we've, we've used pretty much default on all of these, which is um, 50, 50 words in every 1,000. So based on the scoring system, if you have, on average, more than 50 words in a 1,000 that fail, then the whole document will fail the, the quality metric. That's the way it works, and you can change that. So I'll save that, and let's take a look at how it works in practice. So I've recreated the multifarious productivity project, specifically just on the basis of pre-translation. It hasn't been translated, and I just wanted to use this as a guide. So once the file is open, up here on the side here, you can see I've in my little product, uh, my little qualitivity plugins, the activity tracker is going and my quality metrics is there. I've got two items in there already because I've already started the quality, um, the quality process on this, this particular document. The way you get them in there, the container tab is showing you a list of the things that are there. You can add them from here, but it takes a little bit longer to add them from there. So the developer added this little quick insert box, which is really very neat, and I like this a lot. So the way this works is, say, for example, I came down to the, ne the next item here, which is uh, machine translation of this. This is actually a pretty much uh, 
just a poor translation. So what you might do, you select the text which you think um, is wrong. So in this case, I might say that lot. And then in the comments, I could say um, from each year. It doesn't make a lot of sense after that. Probably a fairly unrealistic QA check, but we'll do that one anyway. So this one could be um, length, uh, terminal, no accuracy, mistranslation. And severity, that's pretty bad. I'm gonna call that a critical because it's totally wrong. And then you just click on add. So now I've got three in the box. As I scroll down a little bit further, we go to the next segment. So here we have each year the ordinary accidents. We'll just look at the beginning. Um, they should be simple accidents really. So each year we could say, take one word and just say, simple will be better. And the type might be style perhaps. And let's say it was overly literal. It's just an example. The default is major and we add it. So now we've got a fourth there. So I'm gonna go through the, this document and just fill this report up a little bit so we have a meaningful report at the moment. So you're gonna miss all that bit. So I've just added 10 to the list. So as I come over to the container, you can see I've got um, my list items. If I go over the comment, it tells you what the comments were that we actually made on each, each individual one. You can double click the comments and it navigates you to the particular um, segment where that, is, where that is appropriate. So imagine if you had a really long list, it could be quite nice just to drag this box over to the left and install it on the left. Maybe let's just have a little go at that, see how that would work. So take out the quality metrics just by itself and maybe put that there. So if you had a big long list, you could work through it quite nicely while you're doing this work here and you could read them properly and see them when they're working down the left. So there's probably a number of ways you could work with that, but it's pretty nice. So I close that. Let's go to um, document rates and let's just say it was a flat rate for doing a bit of a review. So I'm going to say it was a custom rate, 50 euros. that rate for the QA. Okay, so there's my item done, the work's finished. And if I now go back to the Qualitivity application, let's go find the item. So I guess is this one up, this one down here at the bottom. And I click on the Activity Documents, Document Reports, Here we go. So I'm going to take that out a second and make this a bit bigger on the page so that we can see it. So what that gives me when I've finished is a quality assessment report. It gives me the report type, the project name, who the client was, the number of documents when it was created, which metric was used and what threshold was there, and then what the result was, whether I passed or failed. You then get a similar um, amount of information on the actual document itself. So this is a summary if you had multiple documents in your project. Um, this is um, the details for the, the one specific document. So it tells you what penalty was allowed, how it was calculated, what penalty was applied and whether you passed or failed. And I did pass even with those 10 there. So that's pretty good. Um, you get a little table on the side here which summarizes the um, quality metric assessment results that you chose and how often they occurred um, and then whether they resolved or not because you can tick them off as you're working to go through and resolve all of these um, to change the score. In fact let's just take a quick look at that. So we've currently got all of these items that we, pick, we picked up. It has passed but none of them are resolved. So let's see how you would do that. So I drag this back down and just drop it back in the window again. Go back to my projects and open the file up again. So this opens up 
allowing me to see all of the information. So if we come to the first one here, the first one was in the interest of people, I'd say it's in the interest. So let's correct that. So we would say, if I had to correct it, we're just removing it from the item, from the item altogether. So we would right click, say, edit the quality metric. And in the status, we would say resolved. Okay. And you see that also the little blue there becomes a green. If we take the next one, we might say edit quality metric and we might say this one, um, we can ignore it. We don't care that Bob is called Mark or vice versa. And we say, okay. And then it becomes a red. So those little pins change as you're working by. And when we close that file, let's just say, okay. And then go back to studio, click the appropriate file, which is this one at the top here, I think, or oh, this one down the bottom, this one down the bottom. Here's the last one we just did. I look at my quality assessment report. And this is a smaller report now, but it's showing me which ones I'd ignored, which ones I've resolved and what was still open. But if I wanted to merge this, if I wanted to have just one document that contained everything and I wanted the up-to-date pattern, then I could click on the two here, merge the project activities. I get a warning then that says you're merging activities with tracking information where the same segments exist in multiple documents. So it might cause a discrepancy with the word count total if you're accumulating them. Um, I'm not so much worried about the word count total for this report, so I'm going to say, um, do you want to accumulate them? Yes. And then I'm going to say, final QA. Okay. And now when I look at the assessment report, I now have a bigger report. It incorporates all of the items. So I've got a bigger list, including the resolved and the ignored. And as I scroll down, I can see all of the um, individual items in that report. So pretty nice. I like that quite a lot.